I'm Drew. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. I recently did a video on Trigger Tech's Diamond AR Trigger. Love the trigger. And as I was doing it and doing my research and getting ready, yeah, I realized that there's a lot of terms out there that a lot of us have heard. Sometimes we use them. Sometimes we use them incorrectly. And I coined the term trigger talk in that video. So what I wanted to do was just put together a really quick, short and sweet video on trigger talk and hopefully answer any and all questions and familiarize yourself with the terms that we use for triggers. Okay, now everybody loves a good trigger and anymore there is a, a huge huge assortment of triggers out there to choose from. We've got single stage, we got two stage. And so what I want to do here real quick is just run through. I'm a visual person, so I want to show you hands-on with a finger here, pull it on the trigger. We'll go through all the different terms with a custom two stage. Then I'm going to do a mill spec two stage, and then I'll show you what a single stage is difference. Well, let's just run through the terms here. Pre-travel is going to be all the positive movement of the trigger from the resting position to where it actually breaks. Okay, now that's going to include the take up. Okay, so this is the take up. And on this custom trigger, that is very small. Other triggers, especially like mill spec, that can be huge. And then the wall is when we hit and it stops. And then creep is any perceptible movement until it breaks. Okay, so we've got take up, the wall, and then creep if there is any. And we'll see that with another trigger. There really is no creep in this trigger. And then the break, of course, is where the sear disengages and releases the hammer. Now, the travel or over travel is after it breaks, and there's there's really no travel with this trigger. And I'll show you again with another one, because sometimes the trigger just keeps coming back after the break. That's travel or over over travel. Now, all positive movement of the trigger, positive movement is movement going that way towards pulling it. Negative then, like on the reset, is coming back the other way. Now the reset is after the break, we have a little bit of movement. That's the reset distance. And again, this can vary widely with this custom trigger. It's almost non-existent. So then we get to the, uh, to the terms mush and gritty, mushy and gritty. That has to do with our take up and the actual wall or the break. Okay, so creep, mush, gritty is after we hit the wall. And then if we have a lot of movement there, it can be kind of mushy where we can feel it slowly squeezing. It can be gritty where it almost feels like it's stopping and hitting different stops. That's what they call a stacking issue. And then, and then the creep is just kind of all that put together. And then we have the trigger pull weight, which is how many pounds of force it takes for the pre-travel and then the actual break. And then the trigger pull weight is both pre-travel and break combined for your total trigger pull weight. Okay, so what I have here for a typical mill spec or battle rifle trigger, and this is the M1A SOCOM I'm doing a review on. Awesome gun, but it, it has, it has a very military trigger. So we kind of go through some of those things, th same things. We've got our pre travel here, and it's not a consistent, totally clean. And then we hit the wall and watch real close. Okay, actually that was better than I thought. We'll just look at the reset and reset distance here. Had quite a bit there. And then, see, and you could see that little bit of creep. Big difference with this. We have significantly more pounds or pull in the take up. We hit the wall and it's not quite as definitive. And there's the wall. 
And watch real close. See, and that was, that really wasn't as bad as I was originally thinking. That was a little bit of creep. Now, once that pulled, now watch the movement here after the break. Okay, that's going to be our travel or over travel. Okay. We've got quite a bit of travel there. This is my Ruger PC that I did a review with Tandem Cross. I love this. This is their victory trigger. And you can see some of the little things in there. That is for preventing over travel. Okay, so we hit, it's got a little bit of take up. It's not considered a two stage. Little bit of creep, not much. Clean break, and you can see there. That prevents over travel. And we can adjust then our travel or over travel. And then the reset. Real faint. There's a spring in here that helps with the reset. The stiffer the spring, the faster the reset. And there's our re-engaging of the, the sear. Okay, so that's two very different two-stage triggers. Uh, huge difference between those. Now I'm gonna show you uh, a traditional single stage, which is those of you that do mostly just bolt action and hunting rifles, this is what you're going to be more familiar with. And this is a Mosin Nagant with a drop-in Tim Timney trigger that I actually did quite a while ago. This is a single stage. Now, most of your classic bolt action rifles are going to be single stage. And essentially, there is no pre-travel. Not essentially. There is no pre-travel. You're, you're at the wall with a single stage. So we still can have creep. Not with this trigger though. That's a really nice, that is a really nice trigger. I love the Timney. It's just at the wall. Okay, and lastly here, I wanna show you the old classic, you know, World War II era military style Two stage. Now, back then, the triggers were really, really nice. They don't, they don't just make them like they used to. Now, I'll just show you a classic World War II era. This is my K31. Man, these were awesome guns. They didn't really get used. Okay, they're going to be two stage. And look at that pre-travel. That's pretty typical for that era. And then you hit the wall. Okay, we hit the wall. Boy, it's a nice trigger. There's really no creep. And this, this trigger has not been modified. Okay, and then you can see the wall. Then you have the travel. Now, we're not really worried about the reset because bolt action rifles, we gotta cycle it and you're not gonna be keeping your finger on the trigger like you are on a semi-auto and then looking to slowly re-engage that sear. The main focus of this was to help you understand when you're shopping or looking for a trigger, what it means when they're explaining those things, you know, zero creep, adjustable over travel, so that you get what you want. But bottom line, guys, it's all in the finger. How does it feel if you like it? Who cares what the terms are? Who cares what the measurements are? If it's good, it's good. It is what it is. Thanks, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and sub. Let's get as much trigger time as we can. Till next time, be safe.